simple and plain. No superpowers, no famous name. But I stand tall, cause I believe something greater has come alive inside of me. Good morning. Welcome everyone. Welcome for everyone that's watching online. We're going to be starting in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for being here with us at Unity Athens this morning. This is Reverend Bronte Colbert wishing you a wonderful day and a beautiful week ahead. We've got music by Denise Rosier. If you'd like to visit her website, it's denise.com.
Good morning again, and welcome to Unity Athens. Thank you for joining us this morning on this beautiful last Sunday in August. If you would, just um, relax and get comfortable as we have an opening prayer from our wonderful prayer chaplain trainer coordinator, Peggy Olson, an LUT graduate, and she's also teaching some classes we'll tell you about later. Is this on? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Bronte, it's so good to see you. See you physically and see you virtually or see you in the live stream. Our prayer chaplain for today is Trish Custom Porter. So if you have a desire to pray with her or if you would like to pray with her, just Go up to her and say, can I pray with you? And she is more than happy to pray with you at any time. And if you would like her to pray for you, you can tap it in the stream and she will send you a prayer through the distance, which works just as well. Thanks. Also, one other thing I want to say before we settle down is the World Day of Prayer, September 8th and 9th. So that is going to be a virtual event for us this year again, like it was last year. You can go to the Unity Worldwide Ministries website and find the World Day of Prayer. Sometimes you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen, but it has it. And click on that, and it gives you the entire schedule. And so there's an opening ceremony online. There's an 11 o'clock service. There's a closing service. There's several things that are going on. And you can participate in that. And you can send all your prayer requests to Silent Unity either on the computer or you can mail them in. It's not until September the 8th and 9th, so you have time to snail mail your prayer request if you wish. Thank you. So turning to Ben, being quiet for a second. Slowing our breathing just a wee little bit. 
Feeling relaxed. How beautiful were Denise's words. In a world that so many are lost, we know God. We know that God is within and is without in our created worlds. We live and move and have our being in the force and the substance that we know and often call God, or Great Spirit, or Allah. And we know that that spirit is in this place. Right now, in this present moment, is truly what we have. We are so grateful. We see blessings now on those who feel lost. We see safety, protection, comfort, aid that those have already been stricken with a natural disaster of hurricanes and storms and those that are preparing to face a hurricane, storms. Our hearts, our love, our energy, we lift up the vibration, we set our frequencies send out protection, love, comfort, and healing to all those who are seemingly in danger and those who grieve for any loss. We are able to send our love, our healing love and comfort to each and every person that is on our mind or heart, that we hold dear and we love. And looking upward in our thoughts, in our feelings, we do know and realize that the sun is shining, that it is a beautiful day, that spirit is in this place. That we were surrounded with healing, prosperity, an abundance of love. And for all these capabilities and for all these blessings, we are so very grateful. And now we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So be it and so it is. Amen. morning. The word for today is awareness. The world feels new as I grow in awareness. Spending time in mindful contemplation increases my awareness of my surroundings. As I concentrate and focus my attention, I shut out distractions and settle my unquiet mind. My world begins to feel brighter, vibrant, and more alive as I notice the soft sounds and my new textures and colors I overlooked before. Spending time in prayer increases my awareness of God's goodness, which I share with others when I am patient and kind, generous and forgiving. This goodness returns to me as kindness and gentleness in the people I meet and ease and grace in all the places I go. The world has not changed, but I have. My awareness of God in and as my life has opened my eyes and my ears and my mind and my heart. And today's scripture, open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Psalm 119, 18.
And ooh, that was loud. I got loud all of a sudden. I could use that sometimes. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad to see you. We're so glad to have folks here in person and people watching on the Facebook Live live stream. I'm Reverend Bronte Colbert, and I'm just delighted, just delighted to have another Sunday here. We are, we have some announcements, and our typical response to that is, because sometimes announcements can be kind of, yeah, so, yay! yay. Okay. Peggy, thank you for that wonderful opening prayer, and thank you so much, Trisha Custom Border, for the beautiful reading of the Daily Word. Trisha is our on staff um, prayer chaplain today. So, how does that work? Well, if you would like someone to pray with you, you can go up to Trisha and you could say after the service, Trisha, would you pray with me? And she will say, Yes. And you can go in the back room, we do require masks on, and we can talk and pray through a mask. I mean, God hears no matter what. So there'll be special distancing back there too, but our prayer chaplains are so wonderful. They support me too. When I have something on my heart, I call one of the prayer chaplains and I say, you know, just pray with me. Help me to see beyond the appearances of whatever might be going on in my life. And yeah, things go on in my life all the time because we're human, right? So other announcements today. Peggy Olson has got two events, classes going on, and we're very, excuse me, very excited about that. For those of you that are early risers, raise your hand if you are. <laughs> um, she has a prayer and book discussion and just time to share on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings from 6.30 until 7.30 a.m. If you're here in person, you can get info on that. And if you are watching online, we have her email for you if you would like it. And you can find out the Zoom link for that. So now you don't have to get up and go anywhere at 6.30 in the morning, except maybe for some coffee in your kitchen table. And you can have a nice way to start the day. What a wonderful way, wonderful way to start the day. She also is teaching a class, and it's about the book by Jim Rose Murphy, who is a unity minister and very prolific author. I've been looking at some of his other titles. And he's also going to be at our Canuga retreat this coming week. And the book is Living the Mystical Life Today. And that's on Wednesday evenings from 6 o'clock to 8. And am I right, Peggy, that people don't need to attend every class? They can stop in as needed. If they don't have the book, it's short enough where it can be discussed in class if you don't have time to read it ahead of time. I remembered, yay. <laughs> and other things going on, Peggy mentioned the World Day of Prayer. I am, I have been doing a Wednesday meditation at one o'clock the first Wednesday of every month. I will be away at the retreat this week. So I'm going to transfer that into the second Tuesday of September, Wednesday. Wednesday, thank you. Second Wednesday of September, and that's here in the sanctuary, and I might be able to live stream it um, at one o'clock. You can come for part of that or come in later if you want. It's all good. So end of announcements, yay again, and we're gonna have time for meditation. During our meditation, if you're new online or in person, we always include about two minutes of deep quiet where you can just go within connect to however you see God, perhaps get a nudge or an idea, or my nudges don't always come right away. Sometimes it's later in the day. Sometimes it's two days later. I might be asking for guidance. It might come in the lyrics of a song. It might come in a numeral message. But that meditation time, I believe, and Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, the founders of Unity, taught is where we get the truth and where we can find a deeper truth about our lives. So if you will join me now, Kevin will play some soft music. If you're at home and you want to get real comfortable, maybe you're in a hammock outside, maybe you're on vacation somewhere, maybe you're in your kitchen or your living room, it's good to feel grounded, I think. I like to put my feet on the floor, grounded and feeling the ions from Mother Earth 
also the sense of faith that comes up from the earth. And I think about my breathing. I'll guide us a little bit, but you can also tune me out if you want and just go into your own sense of quiet and spirit. Might want to light a candle if you're at home or turn off the lights like we just did. So think about our breathing. Taking deep breaths and then letting go. Perhaps feeling your body as a body temple or a spirit walking in this world, seeing it blessed, seeing it healthy and whole. Sinking into that sense of spirit that you are protected, you are loved, you are cherished. You have a divine purpose in the world. It's not something to seek out or seek after. It's something to know that just for being here, you make a difference. You spread light. You help others in ways you may not ever know just by being here. Breathe. We exhale. We breathe in. And we let go. infinite spirit, all that is, whatever your name is for the divine, we feel that presence within us now, that light, we allow inspiration to come to us we allow calming peace to come to us. We let go of worry, if it's even just for the moment, we let it go. We feel that divine light shining upon us and within us. And if there are those that are on our hearts and on our minds, we send out love and light now. Wrapping them in well-being. seeing them feeling that light. We send love and light across our world. Blessing all parts of it. Send blessings out across our country. And upon our beautiful Mother Earth. And in that 
and sense of blessingness and quietude. We go deeper now into the silence. If thoughts come in, it's okay. You can recognize them, tuck them away, or sweep them aside. Or wrap them in light and love. As we turn deeper within, focusing on the breath or a mantra, such as God loves me or I am or so hum. As we go deeper still into a safe and loving place. Again, focusing on the breath. And if you've been blessing others or not, take a moment to bless yourself. To see yourself strong. Healthy wise abundant as a beacon or a flame of love and light in this world opening your eyes only when you're ready perhaps with a stretch Turning on the lights when you're ready. Thank you, Peggy. Big breath. <sighs> Isn't meditation wonderful, Peggy? Also, oh. why don't we do it all the time? Of course, then it might be a little hard to function in the world. Like, okay, yes, I'll get that project done, boss. As soon as I meditate for a couple hours, yes, that would be good. So, good morning again. Today, we're going to talk about forgiveness because it just kept coming up this week for me in a couple of different ways. And here is a quote from Charles Fillmore, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore were the founders of Unity and started, it was actually, they didn't really start a church back at the beginning, but they started getting their messages across around 1889 which is amazing. And when they did, they didn't really want to have a church. They wanted to teach these teachings. And um, when people kept saying, but we want to go to a kind of service, we want to pray together. 
they were so in tune with the idea of not trying to draw people to their belief system only, that people have their own belief systems and that unity principles and teachings can help them get a deeper dive into it, that when they started their services, they did it at about four o'clock or two o'clock on Sunday afternoon, so it wouldn't conflict with people wanting to go to their own services, which is also delightful. Charles said this in his one of his books in 1939, you can drive away the gloom of disappointment resolute, resolutely singing a sunshine song. The world needs a new hymnal with words of truth only and music so strong and powerful that it will penetrate to the very center. And I love that, the very center of your soul. And I think songs like the ones Denise Rosier did that we played at the beginning of the service do just that. I had kind of some things on my mind this week and I had to do some driving. So I put the happy song by Pharrell Williams in the car and on CD, yes, I'm still using CDs. But when I recorded it, I put four of them in a row on this particular CD. So I'm driving, I had the windows down because my AC wasn't working in the car. And <laughs> I was singing away and blasting the happy song everywhere. And then there's a couple other songs and then there's two more rounds of it at the end of the CD. So it, and it did, it lifted me up. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I don't care if my air conditioner isn't working properly and it's 98 degrees outside, that's okay. I'm going to the dealership to have them look at it. And maybe it's because I played that song so many times, but I got in the dealership and I'm thinking, okay, please let it be something little, you know, like a fuse. Yeah. No, I can do a fuse. And I walked in and I'm going to share this story because it was a small area where you walk in and get your service reported and they write it up. And <clears throat> I've been very mass conscious. I only don't wear it when I'm talking here. But I walked in and it's a very small room and there were three employees there and not one of them had a mask on. And I think they saw me pause for a minute and I probably looked like a deer with headlights in my eyes, but I corrected myself because I believe in well-being and I believe in health and I wanted to get my AC fixed. So I went in and I talked to the young person and said, you know, it's doing this and that and I looked it up online and it could be something with this vent. And uh, he looked at me and he said, oh, okay, let me check something. It sounds like it's your condenser. And I, oh, oh my goodness, that's, that's a really big bill, isn't it? He didn't answer me, but he kept looking on the screen, and he said, ah, I was right. That particular car and model and year has an issue with the condenser, so it's under um, or, uh, yeah, recall, and you'll get a totally new free condenser, and all the labor will be free. <sighs> I was so glad I didn't walk out of that room because of the mass, <laughs> and so that's part of forgiveness, too, kind of looking at things in a different way. And I was just, and they gave me a loaner car and I was driving around in a 2021 car for the rest of the day. It was a lovely experience. And there's times when I don't forgive as easily or I thought I forgave something and it still keeps showing up and I know I haven't cleared on a really deep level. Charles Fillmore also said this from his book called Prosperity, which is wonderful reading. And most of his texts are available online at a website by Mark Hicks, which is called truthunity.net, truthunity.net. And they're all there. He's got wonderful archives of all kinds of information. Anyway, Charles said this, hold steady to the thought of the omnipresence of universal supply its perfect equilibrium, and its swift action in filling every apparent vacuum or place of lack. Practice giving, even though it may be in a small way. Give in a spirit of love and give when you cannot see any possibility of return. And I think forgiveness fits into that too. When we're giving forgiveness, even if we don't think we're gonna get a return on it. It cleanses us, it cleanses the inside. One more Bible quote. 
Matthew 7, 12. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. If I was a service person in a little room and my co-employees wouldn't wear their masks and I'm sitting there or two without my mask, the thing would be to not judge. I don't know the circumstances there, right? So give and give and give. Wonderful book by Jim Rosemurgy. We, was, we were talking about him a little earlier because Peggy's doing a class. This one is called The Transcendent Life. It has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. I read it some years ago, and I pulled it back out because of Peggy's class. It's not the one she's teaching on. Understanding the nature of true power. When we talk about forgiveness here, Oftentimes we do the Ho'oponopono, which is the Hawaiian technique of forgiveness. The chiefs of the different islands, and obviously they're pretty far apart and back in ancient and not quite so ancient times, would gather together to release anything that wasn't working, to give up any things that seemed to be in conflict between each other. And as they would meet, they would do a thing called setting things right. And it was this Ho'oponopono that was saying, which has gotten very popular. People from the movie The Secret have carried it on into books and other techniques and workshops. We're not going to do that as a practice today, but just to be familiar with it, if you're not, you think of three things that you would like to forgive. It could be three people, it could be an incident that you're feeling some strain or stress about. And you can sit with each one at a time and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. And you can switch them around. In my early New Thought teaching, I was taught not to say, I am followed by anything negative because I am is the essence of spirit, was the name given to Moses. By God, I am, I am that I am. So I had to kind of work around it at first, and I would say, if I hurt you, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Does that work better? For, but it made it much longer. And so in the long run, I started saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. And you if you're thinking, okay, well, she said she's sorry, but she doesn't feel like she did the wronging. It's a mutual thing. So yes, the people that I was trying to get some forgiveness about had done things I thought to me, but I was thinking of them in a negative way because they were, if that makes sense. So you might want to try that technique at home. Every time I've done that in a concentrated way, Amazing things have happened. People I haven't heard from in years have called and said, you know that thing we went through, you know, 15 years ago? Let's talk about that and clear the air about it. I'm like, oh, I didn't want to say I, I just ho pono pono you because they'd be like, okay, this is very strange and I don't know what that is and I really don't want to know. So, in this wonderful book, he talks about forgiveness. And then some of my other sources lately are talking about forgiveness, including a woman from Unity called Imelda Shanklin. She has a collection of studies, and this is the one on forgiveness. I'm just going to read a few parts of this. She says, in effect, Father was her name for God, forgive me for expecting in the human that which is found only in the divine. Oh, that stopped me. Because sometimes I think we expect humans to act divine and not to hurt us. Or, or they have their own ways. And we don't know what everybody's gone through in their life to make them act or react in certain ways. Note, forgive me, she said. In other words, I have sinned, which in 
unity we call error thinking or missing the mark. We don't talk about sin and going to hell. In unity, hell is a sense of consciousness. It's what we create in our lives. I have done error thinking by expecting in the human of the person something that can only be found in the divine self, the God within the individual. I must take responsibility for my attitudes. And I read this again and again to myself, and I was like, okay, what if I had attitudes about, and I can get snarky, and I can say, oh, they shouldn't do this and that. So I have to turn and look at myself. She said, we must ask the mind of God to remember in us that each soul is yielding as fully as it knows how, yielding as fully as it knows how the expression of God. Let us pray God's love to be patient in us. If things seem not wise or right, let us pray God's wisdom to prompt us to feel that God is working everywhere to radiate its glory from this planet. And then she offered some suggestions on how to pray with the thought of forgiveness, including these, God of love and forgiveness, love and forgive in me. Second, all that has offended me, I forgive. Sometimes we don't want to give it up, you know, so yeah. Sometimes we just don't want to give it up. It's something I did when I was young where, you know, I didn't like the way one of my schoolmates talked to me. My threat back when I was five and six in kindergarten was, if you don't treat me better, I'm not going to invite you to my horse ranch when I grow up. Ooh. And I, I think it worked. It, I never got the horse ranch part. It didn't work maybe because I was threatening people with not going there. Whatever has made me bitter, unhappy, or restless, I forgive. Bitter, unhappy, or restless. That's interesting. From henceforth, I shall remember that thy spirit animating me and all others is perfect, holy, that thy presence makes this planet heaven. Next one. I forgive everything that I have remembered as offense. I forgive everything which not remembering may have been offense to me. If there be in the depths of subconsciousness that which holds itself as offense, I forgive. I let it go and can no more be offended by it. And again, whether it's present, recent past, or long ago past, it doesn't really make any difference, I think, in the other person's life, but it clears our side of it. And I'll take that back, because as we see that person cleared from any bad feelings from ourselves, we shine a light on them. And that's when you may get those phone calls or those moments or the little note in the mail saying, just was thinking of you the other day, I love you. Or just was thinking of you, you know that time? You know, I didn't mean to do that. Or it's that note saying, why don't you ever call me anymore? <laughs> Last one. I forgive that thy love may cleanse my soul, that thy life may flow through my flesh and make me again to the undisguised image likeness. She looked back a ways too with the lovely language. I forgive the ignorance of the past, and from this moment I hold thy mind to be my mind, talking to spirit, that the light eternal may make bright the paths of my soul. Oh, that's a prayer I'd like to see in one of our prayer chaplain's prayers. Make bright the paths of my soul. Within and without, in the past, in the present, and in the things to come, she says, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. Oh. I'm doing a lot of Bible because I'm studying for some credentialing at uni. Yeah, Peggy's, yeah, yeah, it's more Bible than you usually do. Yeah, and Peggy's doing a lot of Bible too. We're just Bibling all the time. So I wanted to ask a question about the whole Pono Pono. Okay. Do you do that 
with a person or do you just do it by yourself? Thank you, Peggy, for clarifying that, especially if someone's not familiar with it. No, you don't call the person and say, I want to hold Kono with you. It's, although you could, like the tribal leaders did. But you just go into the quiet and you just see that person. Um, and it might be someone even that has passed on. It, you know, there's some old memories or something there. And you just say, I love you, you know. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Um, the interesting thing the first time I did it was like three people. And I'm going to suggest we do that today, not out loud, not in your, you know, in your mind. If there's three people or three incidences, it could be an expression. It could be someone on the news. It could be someone in politics even that you've been with. Mm. Um, you just send them that light and love and you're cleansing yourself. There's so much more you can read about that, including the Hawaiian um, mental health hospital, I'll call it that, where no one ever got better and one doctor came in and used this technique over the files, not even over the people. Before he read the files, he was blessing them like that. The whole atmosphere of the institution changed. People stopped quitting, staffers stopped quitting, and people were actually getting better and being able to go out into the world. The last thing I want to talk about is from 1 Corinthians 13, 12, the dark mirror. And that Bible verse, for now we see in a mirror darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I also have been known. So Jim Rosemurgy talks about it in this book, and also in some of the Fillmore's work, you know, books called The Revealing Word and the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, which I've been reading a lot of also, that this essence of forgiveness is like a washing, and I never quite thought of it that way. I thought of it as a release, I thought of it as a cleansing, a new way of thinking, but actually washing everything clean, the slate, blackboard, the thoughts, and like water, just washing through and cleaning it, starting fresh and anew. So then I saw in the glass of the mirror darkly, you see probably, probably flashing it to the, into the camera, but I didn't want to rub mud all over this mirror, <laughs> so I used some soap because I'm practical and I want to wash it off later. But you can't really see yourself, can you, when the mirror is dark? And we can't really see our own selves when we are dealing with unforgiveness and judgment on other people. But as we clear it, and forgiveness can take multiple times. God knows I've got some multiple ho'oponoponos I've done and other. If we just, you know, okay, I'm gonna wipe this off. I'm gonna make it better. Well, can you see in it now? Not really, it's just smeared, right? And I might do it again. And it might be a little better, or I might just smear that stuff around a little more. I might still have had some of it on the towel that I was trying to clean the mirror with, which doesn't really make the situation go away. Now, I could spray it with some mirror cleaner, but that would take a lot of steps. So this is the clean side of the mirror, which is probably going to be a little greasy now. Um, we see in a mirror darkly. We cleanse with forgiveness, and then we see ourselves shining brighter. That is the difference. Our hearts open up. We can spend a lot of time individually watching TV and being angry at things. Politicians, people that don't think like us, social justice issues, so many things we might want to change in this world. And it's good. Change is good, and standing up for what we believe in is really good. I have been in prayer meetings and protests most of my life, one way or another. 
However, if we continue to hold a lot of anger and angst at things that we really cannot control, a certain politician or a large group of people that are thinking like, we don't want them, we don't want to think, we don't want to see, or we don't want to hear about, or things in the world like floods and fires, oh, bless the people that are coming to help. But if we are constantly focusing on that which we don't want, especially in the case of conflict, people not acting right in our minds, our mirror, our glass, to me, gets darker. And then it might be harder for me to see that which I want to see or be that who I want to be. I can't spend my life correcting people or trying to convince them that being open and non-judgmental and loving kindness and do unto others is the way to live. I can't control everybody, but I know it makes me feel better. So I clean my own mirror, I clean my own glass, and I try to look at the world through a cleaner glass. So if you're at home, you might want to take a slip of paper and just do it mentally. There are three people or three things in your life. And if you can only think of one at the moment, maybe it's something really powerful and you can't get past that one. Um, think of just blessing that situation. You can do Ho'oponopono in your mind if you want, but there's other ways to forgive. Say, I see you clearly. I see you as a child of God walking in this world, doing the best that you can with what you have. If I feel I've hurt someone, I can say, I'm sorry. See, I still stop when I do that. If I did anything to make your life difficult, or if I did or said anything that made you even for a moment feel less than the beautiful and delightful being that you are. Please forgive me. And then when the news or things like that come on that make me get riled up, I can say, oh, it's an opportunity for prayer. Because everything is. Right, prayer chaplains? Yeah, everything's an opportunity for prayer. So I can hold that light and love around people. But the main thing is to remind ourselves to do that, and to come from a heart place, from a loving place. I've had people in my life that were really, really hard to forgive. Would I want to spend more years with them? I don't know. I can think of times when my mother got angry with me, or I got angry at my mother. Now that she's passed into the great eternal just having fun, I feel. She comes to me, and it was her birthday yesterday. So 828, which is her birthday, kept showing up, because I mentioned it on Facebook. And just before I went to sleep, just before I went to sleep, well, three hours before I went to sleep, well, four hours before I went to sleep, I was jumping on my trampoline at home, and it got kind of dark outside, and I was like, really, what time is it? Because that's one of the ways she shows up. I looked at my Fitbit, 8.28. And I said, thank you, Mom. You know, And I think I added, you know, if I ever didn't listen to you or didn't find ways to make your life better, because that's a type of forgiveness, too, please know that I always loved you. And it was a wonderful way to close that day. So think about that. Kevin, we're just going to have a couple minutes of music and then we'll do our closing sacred exchange and our closing prayer so just take a moment if you will and you know, close your eyes and maybe there's no one you want to do forgiveness work on and that's fine also maybe i just go into a blessing just hold this space together send love you can say I wish I had seen the light in you brighter. I wish I had told you this or that. I 
I wish I, had, I wish I had understood you more. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for all you taught me. Thank you for reminding me that God is in everything and everyone. Thank God for releasing me from judgment on this person, on this situation, on this particular type of group consciousness. I am grateful for my life and all that have been a part of it. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for my world. I'm grateful for all that is all that I am and all that I will be. And so it is. Thank you, Kevin. I hope you found that useful. I hope that gives you something to think about or work on this week. If you found that moved your spirit and you would like to give a gift to Unity Athens, we have multiple ways to do that on our website at unityathens.com. If you are from another faith center or church or belief system, please support your home faith center in these times. And we also have baskets here. We have what we call sacred exchange because unity teaches what you give comes back to you multiplied abundantly. And we really believe that it's not just a saying. I've experienced that so much in my life, um, including that AC condenser. So we hold our gifts or the thought of our gifts or the thought of our abundance over our hearts, our heart chakra, our center, knowing that abundance flows to us. And if you'd like, we say the sacred exchange affirmation. And at the end, use your own name for God. I'm getting away from any kind of genderizing on God. Divine love flowing through me, blessed and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. Thank you, infinite spirit. Fine, all. Amen. And so it is. We do have baskets here. And just a reminder, Trisha is the prayer chaplain for today. So if you would like to pray with Trisha, just talk to her after we close and go in the background and pray together. She's a wonderful prayer. Also remember Peggy's classes. If you want info from her, you can email Peggy at Peggy. P. Olson? Yeah, yeah. P. Olson 5555 at AOL.com. I'm getting better at that, baby. Thank you. One of these days, I'll just... Yes. Kevin, let's play um, I Send My Love, if you would, for a closing song. We also want to include in our prayers all the hospitals, not only here in Athens, but all across our country and our world, all the medical staff, we see us moving through this appearance of so much illness and getting into our divine health and helpers, helpers, helpers everywhere.
Sending our love. All our dear ones, our families, our friends. Louisiana, anyone in the areas of have difficult weather, you see rain when there is fire, and joy. Over the mountains, I send my joy. We send peace where there is a kind of war or conflict. I send my joy. Allow our joy to shine out. Others may see it. See that spark in us and be inspired to find their own joy. I send my power. Send your power over the mountains. The power to love. The power to change lives. The power to make things better. Over the sea. The power to walk in this world knowing we make a difference. That your life matters ways you may never even doubt the lives you've touched, the differences you have made just by being here. Peace. We send peace over the mountains, flowing out, touching I send lives. peace over the sea, I send peace into the heavens. Send my power, send my power over the mountain. Over the mountain. I send my power, send my power over the sea. I think that's a good boy. I send my power, send my power into the mountains. We approach it with the power of light and love, making a difference. I send my love. Sending waves of love, I send touching love hearts across the globe. Over the sea, I send my love. Sending love to all of you here today. Into the heavens. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for being here. Feel it flowing out and returning to you. Kevin for running all the technology again today. Yes. So we'll close with this from Emily Cady's book, Lessons in Truth. The very circumstances in your life that might seem torturing or heartbreaking will turn to joy before your eyes if you will steadfastly refuse to see anything but God in them. And we look for the God in them. The mirror becomes clear. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste. Always wait to see when Kevin's turning off the camera. <laughs> I know. It's a new world.